What's up guys, Jack here with MTS, and today we're gonna to be talking about enterprise grade switching and using that in the home for cheap. These switches are for sale on eBay all the time for very little money. So I wanna see if any of these are a viable option to use in the home. Let's get into it. Starting things off here on my right, we have the Dell Power Connect 6248. We have the Aruba SP 2500 and the Cisco Catalyst 4948EF. These are just the three switches I have. This switch was actually in the worst server room 2020 video. This was the load bearing ethernet switch. So it has a few dead ports on it, but overall that shouldn't impact my judgment about the switch. Then we have this Aruba switch, which I picked up on eBay for $167. And the Cisco switch was given to me as a birthday slash Christmas present by a friend of mine who does a lot with Cisco stuff back when I wanted to move my server and my desktop over to 10 gigs. So I wanna talk about the pros and cons of each of these switches, go over the feature sets and see what makes them good or bad for the home use. For the past few years, the Cisco switch has been my at home switch. This has been my primary switch driving my whole network. I have the 10 gig ports to connect to my server, my desktop and to interconnect to another switch. I had a fiber line coming out of the Cisco switch going into the WAN port of the UDM Pro in my video over the 2021 Complete Unify setup. So that's what I've been using this switch for. I then paired it with a different switch. It was a Netgear switch, similar form factor to all of these. However, it died, it caught on fire. Um, and that was providing PoE to everything in my house. Since my Netgear switch caught on fire, I have been pairing this switch here with the USW 16 PoE Gen 2 switch from Ubiquiti. So that's been taking care of all of my PoE needs, but I really want all of my ports to be PoE. And in the new house, I'm gonna have 96 network jacks so far. And if I want them all to be PoE, well, if I wanna go the Ubiquiti route, that's either getting $2,400 worth of switches or looking to something else. So I found this Aruba switch on eBay. It has four 10 gig SFP ports, 48 one gig RJ45 ports, and all of them are PoE. This Dell switch, I haven't really used much for switching. Now I picked off the Dell switch off of the guy, Chris, who owned the business that was Worst Server Room 2020. Um, his company ended up going out of business. We helped him and all of his employees find new jobs and stuff. So they're all taken care of and I ended up buying all of their old networking equipment off of them. So I haven't had much time to play around with the switch. Keep in mind though, in the load bearing ethernet video, we retired this switch. It was not being used anymore after some of the ports died because the only thing supporting the weight of this switch for a couple of years was one of the network cables. So damaged parts of the switch and I haven't really had time to play around with this. This switch has 48 gigabit RJ45 ports, four of which are shared with the SFP ports. So you can choose either SFP or RJ45. These are not 10 gig ports. The Cisco switch has 10 gig ports, the Aruba switch has 10 gig ports, but the Dell does not. The Dell also uses side to side airflow. So this is its intake. This is its exhaust. The Aruba switch is the same story. Intake on this side, exhaust over here. And the Cisco switch is back to front airflow. Yes, I did intentionally say back to front. It takes in air from the back, blows it out the front. It's designed to be a back of rack switch. You can pick up this switch in a configuration that has PoE on all the ports. And on the back, you have stacking ports and an optional add-in slot where you could add in 10 gig RJ45 or 10 gig SFP+. I do not have any of those cards. I was tempted to pick one up for this video, but I probably won't use this switch after this video. So I didn't want to spend all that money on something that I would only use once. The Aruba switch is similar to the Dell switch. It has the 48 gigabit ports, side to side airflow. It only has one power supply similar to the Dell switch, but instead of having stacking and everything on the back, you have you have your console and management ports. So you can do your out of band management, a console over USB. You also have a USB port for plugging in a flash drive and flashing firmware. 
It also has a screen on the front that can be used for changing some of the settings and resetting the switch. I do really like that. And overall, this is the smallest switch out of the bunch in terms of overall footprint. The Cisco switch is kind of the big dog. It is the biggest switch out of all of these. It has dual hot swappable power supplies on the back, has a removable fan tray. I did replace all of the fans in the fan tray with Noctua's, and this thing is still incredibly loud just with the two fans that are in each of the power supplies. And this thing complains when you only have one power supply plugged in. So you kind of have to have both power supplies plugged in and this thing is loud. So in a home, unless you're really trying to learn Cisco, the 4948E and EF, not exactly something I would recommend you using. But speaking of noise, I want to get all of these switches fired up so that way you can hear the different noise levels between the switches. Starting things off, I'm going to fire up the Dell switch. I'm wearing a lavalier mic, so I'm going to get as close as I can to these switches. And this switch does not get any louder. It doesn't have a ramp up and then a drop down when you turn it on. That is it's essentially its fan speed. Unless you really load up this switch and I assume the PoE version would have a higher fan speed if you're drawing more PoE power, but this switch is overall relatively quiet if you're putting it in the basement or a network closet somewhere. Next, let's do the Cisco switch. All right, let's get this guy plugged in here. Now, one of the nice things that this switch has is power switches on each of the power supplies. So if you have all of your cables nicely tied in somewhere, you don't have to unplug power just to turn off or reboot this switch. So I'm gonna flip these power switches here and also keep in mind, four of these fans are Noctua's. You're only hearing two of the original fans. Yeah, this switch is pretty loud. Next, I wanna fire up the Aruba switch. Now in terms of startup sounds, the Aruba switch is incredibly loud, but it drops the fan speed pretty low after it boots up. <laughs> it's so loud. Okay, so once this switch has been booted up for a couple minutes, as you can hear, the switch is incredibly quiet. Like I could have this in the next room over and not really notice it. I wouldn't want to have it in my bedroom, but overall, it's a pretty quiet switch, all things considered. But so this switch is gonna be what's replacing my Cisco switch. I love my Cisco switch, but I just don't use all of its features. I can't justify the power draw and the noise coming out of this guy, as well as just the sheer heat that this produces. So this little Aruba switch is looking pretty good. Also, I took this thing apart to clean it when I first got it, and the fan connectors are just standard PWM connectors. So you could replace these fans with Noctua's relatively easily, and for pretty cheap too. The Dell switch I have not seen the inside of, but I did take a look at the Cisco switch's internals. It's, it's not very fun in the Cisco switch. There's not really a whole lot you can do, but all of the fans are in modules that you can easily pull out the back with just one screw. So. There are pros and cons to each approach. All right, so I moved up here to my desk, and one of the things to note is when using these enterprise-grade switches in the home, there's really not any features that you have to worry about. I mean, these are enterprise-grade switches. They can do just about anything. So what it really comes down to is price to performance and what ports you need. Do you need more gigabit RJ45 ports? Do you need more SFP Plus ports? What matters to you? For me, I needed at least two 10 gigabit SFP Plus ports and I wanted my entire switch to be PoE. So the Aruba SP2500 was a perfect switch. So let's dive into the computer and see how we actually would configure a switch like this. So I have a new private browsing window opened up here and I'm just gonna go ahead and go to my IP address of the switch. So that's 192.168.1.252. That should fill in those details for me there. And my username is admin and I'm gonna put in my password. And it should take us to the dashboard landing page. Uh, in the dashboard, you can see all of your ports and see what's kind of happening with them. On the Cisco switches, you can easily tell just at a glance which ports are at the different speeds. But over here on the Aruba switch, you have to take a look and uh, change the different modes here. Um, one thing that I'm not a big fan of is that the PoE tab doesn't show which ports are pulling PoE, it just shows which ports have PoE enabled. But in terms of speed, it shows only the ports that are populated here. So we have 
this is the G3 Flex camera. And then I have uh, a TV and a sound bar over here. So things that aren't really using a lot of, a lot of throughput. But I can see the status of my ports. We have my connection to my server and my connection to my desktop right here. Two of the SFP Plus ports are stacking ports, so these cannot be used to connect just a desktop to or a server to. But I have all of these ports in this range here are all PoE devices. So that's a bunch of different access points, some cameras, a few other flex switches. These ports, ports zero and one, are access points in my house that are typically deployed. And then one of these other ports here is the flex switch up here in my bedroom. So this thing has 13 devices pulling PoE from it right now. So it's doing pretty good, it's keeping up. It's providing enough power to everything to keep my flex switches powered up. And the flex switch, one of them has two access points connected to it. I just did that as a testing thing to make sure that it's actually able to provide enough power for those types of applications. And it can, it's handling it very well. So we can see our interfaces and I'm just gonna sort by PoE status. So I'm gonna say drawing power and here are all of our ports. We can see our uh, speed here. I can tell just off of this, the, the speed that this is the G3 Flex camera. All running at full duplex shows me the, uh, the transmit usage, the receive usage, and I can go over to VLANs. Now I don't have any other VLANs set up here, but I'm gonna go ahead and create one right now just to see what that process is like. So if I come down to configuration, it'll load up the new page. This is where you would change the time, the, uh, the, the name of your switch. I'm gonna go ahead and actually rename the switch to, I think I'm gonna go with Valence. Valence is gonna be the name of this switch. All right, so that's gonna save those changes. And I'm gonna come over here to VLANs and create a new VLAN. I'm gonna ID this one as VLAN 20. Description, we're gonna call it uh, IoT. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna do 107 because I now learned that that's just lead speak. Um, for IP address and net mask, any of these drop downs that I try and click on don't actually work. They go away. So I have to click and then right click and then I can do stuff. So if I type in 192.168.168.1.1, uh, forward slash two or forward slash 24, and hit okay. Oh, okay. 192.168.107.200. Let's call it that. It should be in the format. What is your problem? 255.255.255.0? Is that what you're looking for? That's what you're looking for. Okay. Cool. So I have my IP address set up. I can hit apply here. And now I can change the switches IP to be on the IOT network, or if I wanted to have a separate management network where the switch will pull its DHCP IP address from. As long as you're setting a static IP address, you shouldn't have an issue with that. But now I have this VLAN created here. You wanna make sure you hit apply, otherwise you will lose it when you go to assign ports to it. So to assign ports to it, I'm gonna come over here to ports and it's gonna bring up this switching tab. I'm gonna click on new. We're gonna call this uh, IOT ports. I'm gonna say these are access ports, VLAN 107, native VLAN 107, allowed VLAN. Again, this drop downs that go away. So as long as I make a change here, I can say 107 and 107. That's all it gets. And for ports, I can right click here and make sure I stay in this tab. Say I wanna take ports 24, or ports, let's just do 29, 30, and 31. And I can hit okay, and now after I hit apply, ports 29, 30, and 31 will be in the IoT VLAN. So if I wanted to have some smart TVs or Roku players or anything like that, that puts them on their own VLAN here, and all the routing would be handled through my router, being a UDM pro. I currently don't use VLANs in my house because I'm still on the stupid AT&T router just because I'm about to move here, so 
didn't really make sense for me to go ahead and start changing routers and all that, so. Okay, so after a little bit of troubleshooting and trying to figure out why my entire internet connection just straight up died after I set up the VLANs, I went back, deleted the VLANs and all that stuff, deleted the, the port group that they were assigned to. So I thought the uplink coming from my router into the Aruba switch was port 27. Turns out it was port 29. So as soon as I assigned those ports 29, 30, and 31 to the VLAN, my entire internet connection dropped out. So I had to play around with that for a minute, but got everything working now. So now I have my VLAN set up for IoT devices. And realistically, that's all I'll be doing with this switch. Now in terms of PoE on switches, because for me, that's something that's very important. I wanna be able to plug in any PoE device to any port in my house and just have it work. It is just one of those quality of life improvements for me. I do a lot of stuff with DMX lighting and testing random little Raspberry Pi projects. So being able to, you know, have the PoE hat on my Pi and just plug it in and being able to plug in my DMX node just to a network jack and that's how it gets its power and stuff because I use DMX lights for doing Christmas stuff. So it's a stage world that I'm used to. So that's how I prefer to do lighting. But this switch seems like it'll be good enough to handle everything. Actually, it'll be fantastic for all of that. A couple things that I forgot to mention, once you're done making changes in the web GUI, you go up to the top right corner and you click on save config. Now this is essentially the Aruba version of copy running config to startup config. So make sure you hit save changes and that way when you reboot the switch, you won't lose any of your changes. Also, this thing is picky about its SFP modules. Now I use Cisco transceivers and DAC cables. I have a DAC cable going to my switch. I had a few extra transceivers laying around and I use the Cisco transceivers to get up here to my desktop. But the Cisco DAC cable would not work in the Aruba switch. It just wouldn't detect it, wouldn't see it or do anything with it. But as soon as I swapped it out for an SFP plus module and ran a fiber line to my server, it picked it up just fine. So I'm not sure why the Cisco SFP plus modules work, but the Cisco DAC cables don't. Just something to note. Now this is one of Aruba's mobility access switches. So having a GUI and easy management is one of its features. Make sure if you're like me and you don't like command line stuff, you get a switch with a good GUI. That's one of the problems that I have with the Cisco switch. No web GUI. All I could do from the web GUI was access the terminal see a command reference list, and that's about it. I had to use a downloaded piece of software in order to manage the switch. And the Dell switch, honestly, I didn't even bother reconfiguring that switch. It just didn't seem worth it to me. But after my switches are set up, I generally never have to touch them again. I just use them as dumb switches because I'm a home user. I'm not somebody who's working in the data center. The most common upper networking term that I actually run into on a daily basis is multicast versus unicast. And that's usually when I'm working with Dante setting up my multicast flows. So another great thing about these switches is they will work for Dante because Dante does not like green ethernet. If you have green ethernet or energy efficient switches, Dante does not work well on those. You'll get packet loss, you'll get dropouts. It's not a fun time, but something like Dante, you know, a professional audio over IP protocol, will work over one of these professional switches. These guys are designed for just about anything you can throw at them. So with that being said, I'm very happy with this switch. I'll leave a link down in the description where you can pick up the Aruba switch, but let me know what you guys think. Are you running enterprise switches? What are you using? Because for me, saving $900 on each switch, that's a win in my book. But thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.